David, is it true that you are going to tell us about a simple new type of machine that has a higher over unity factor than anything else we have covered to this point? Yes, Bjorn, it is true. What kind of machine is that? It is called a two-stage mechanical oscillator. And it could be of great help to people living in the poorest countries of the world where electricity and fuel are extremely scarce or even non-existent. Wow, what does it do then? Well, keep watching this video and you will find out. He was the wizard of a thousand kings And I chanced to meet him one night wandering He told me tales And he drank my wine Me and my magic man kind of feeling fine fire and when he spoke I felt this deep desire to free the world from its fear and pain and help the people to feel free again why don't we voices in our heart Cause then I know we'll find we're not that far apart Everybody's got to be happy Everyone should sing Cause we know the joy of life, the peace that love can bring Thus spoke the wizard in his mountain home The vision of his wisdom means he'll never be alone And I will dream on my magic night and the million silver stars that guide me with their light. So, David, how do we begin to describe this amazing, unusual invention? Well, Bjarne, the inventor's name is Belsko Milkovic of Novi Sad in Serbia. You know the old, and I hope I pronounced his name and the places right, you know the old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. So let us start with a single frame from a video we will show shortly and then describe the parts of this amazing invention. The video is by a YouTuber named Rhead100. Let us look at the parts of this machine. Okay, here is the picture and please tell us about it. First, a weight hanging from the right end of the beam oscillates as a pendulum after being brought to that state by gentle tap-like pushes from the operator. After enough energy is added to the pendulum, a beam across the top of the machine keeps rotating, oscillating, 
like a seesaw, only a few degrees of a circle, but it rotates one direction, then the other. Finally, a heavy weight hanging from the left end of the beam, as seen by the camera, moves up and down. Here is an animated GIF from Milkovic's website giving a simple demonstration of the movements involved. All right, so that all seems to make sense, but how and where do you actually measure the overunity in this device? It is important to note that the energy output from this device is not continuous. So we ask, what happens in a given time interval, let's say in a minute? Careful measurements made on the dual oscillator machines after they are up and running show that the energy, which we can think of that as force times distance, weight times distance, that energy available at the left end of the machine can be as much as 12 times higher than the energy that is put in at the pendulum. Note, that's 12 times, not 12%. 12 times, that certainly is uh, significant, David. Let us show a clip now from that YouTube video that you mentioned uh, earlier, where our head 100 demonstrates a model that he made of this machine. We have a pendulum swinging that's pretty dang on heavy, but it's nowhere near as heavy as this. It weighs approximately 46 pounds, but the weight of the pendulum is not as important as the work it's going to do by adding just a little bit more energy into it. The weight here is 74 pounds. I'm going to have this pendulum that weighs 46 pounds pick this 74 pounds up one or one or inch or more or less, three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half. You just watch it, okay? Watch, watch the weight. Now, here's the deal. I took bathroom scales, put my hand on the floor, and the most I could press with my fingers was 21 pounds. That was everything I had. If I was to press with my fingers 22 one pounds one time every two seconds, I couldn't do that more than a minute or two. My fingers would get tired. But I could push on this evidently with less than 20 pounds of force because I can do it many, many times. Many times for only an inch, just do this. That's all I gotta do, just that. Just to keep this thing swinging. Once I get it high enough to build enough momentum to lift this, then that's all I have to do. Until then, I have to put a lot of energy into it to get it to lift, but once it starts lifting, I put in very, very little energy. Watch and see what happens, please. Here we go, we gotta build it up. Once it's built, then it's a matter of just maintaining. not moving very far at all, it's just the fingers. So it's obvious that I'm putting in a whole lot less than any 20 pounds of energy. And yet I am picking up 74 pounds of weight, one to one and a half inches twice for every time I do this. See, I'm not even getting tired. I could do this for 15, 20, 30 minutes straight without even without even getting tired. Just watch for a minute. David, that is intriguing. How do you see this machine actually being applied to doing useful work for people? Yarna? That up and down motion on the left side of the machine is capable of operating a pump, which means that people living far from fuel or electricity could get water from underground aquifers with much less work than required by a traditional pump. 
and that could possibly be the first clean water many poor people have ever encountered. This machine is far more than a laboratory curiosity. In fact, Milkovic has already created a pump based on this principle. Wow, and David, there it is. Um, and I, I've uh, heard that our good old friend, Dr. Peter Lindemann, has analyzed this device? That is correct. So what was uh, his thoughts about it? Well, he made a thorough analysis of it, and I would like to read a brief quote with his conclusion from his report. Each time the pendulum swings back and forth once, this is a quote, each time the pendulum swings back and forth once, the weight is lifted and dropped twice. Neither the lifting of the weight, nor its dropping, nor the removal of work from the movement of the beam impress any forces on the pendulum that act to damp out its free oscillation. This certainly ranks as one of the most important discoveries in science in the last 300 years. And what that last statement is really saying is that this machine has energy, really energy divided by time, which is power, enters on the right end where the pendulum is, it comes out on the left end where the weight is, but it can't go backward through the machine. That's, that's intriguing. And he says, so Dr. Lindemann says that this is the most important uh, discovery in science in the last 300 years? That's what he said. Does that make it even more important than the iPhone? Hmm. Anyway, so David, I've noticed that this device is dependent on functioning within a gravity field, right? I mean, that pendulum would not swing like this, say in the International Space Station or anywhere else where there's no, no gravity. That is true. And an important insight. Gravity is a necessary component. And the other thing that really stands out to me is that this machine contains a compound rotation, that is a rotation within another rotation. I believe this is where the uh, magic happens. This totally fascinates me. I wish I understood it better. Well, David, maybe one day you will. And since this fascinates you so much, are you aware of any other machine or device where a compound rotation or a rotation within a rotation gives you results quite differently from what it would have been if there was just a single rotation? Yes, Bjarne. Remember about two years ago, we both watched a video from the 70s where this was dramatically demonstrated. The man was Eric Lathwaite, the inventor of magnetically levitated and electrically propelled trains. I love trains. For this demo, he had a steel rod with a ball bearing mounted flywheel fastened to the end of the rod. This assembly weighed 40 pounds and he had difficulty lifting it, even with both hands. An assistant used an electric drill to spin the flywheel up to 2,500 RPM. And then, well, rather than describe it, let's just watch an excerpt from the video. This is an experiment with a spinning wheel, a rather large wheel, 13 inches diameter, mounted in a ball bearing on a shaft three feet long. I am going to hold it like this and swing it in a circle and lift it with one hand, but only when it's spinning. First of all, let me weigh it to show you just how heavy it is. As I talk, you'll see that lifting it is quite an effort. It weighs about 40 pounds and I can't lift it any higher than that without a lot of strain. So now we'll spin it up to two and a half thousand revs a minute 
at which point it becomes a live thing. Then I shall lift it five feet in three seconds by going round in a big circle. Whilst I'm doing it, I shall talk to you so that you shall tell from my voice that I'm not under any stress of any kind. Now, in a minute, I shall let go with my left hand, and holding this remote end of the shaft only, I shall lift the wheel through five feet, all on its own, with no effort on my part. All I do is apparently just to steer it along a path that it's already decided it would like to go. Then there's the question of how you stop the wheel. At speed, that wheel has enough energy to throw itself 200 feet in the air. Did you notice that as it went round in a circle, there was no centrifugal force trying to pull my arm out sideways? Let's just do it once more to save time. We've already spun it up. So here goes 40 pounds of wheel as light as a feather. This is not a conjuring trick. This is a fact of science. Watch it again carefully. A fact about a spinning wheel that so far everyone has missed. Yes, isn't that example of compound rotation amazing? It certainly is. And you notice that the second rotation is the turning of his arm. Provided that Lathwaite kept turning or rotating his arm, the compound rotation assembly behaved as if it had very little weight. Uh, maybe Lathwaite means little weight. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it does, David. Many people will be familiar with the precession of a toy gyroscope which behaves in a way that apparently defies gravity, similarly to what we just saw Lathwaite demonstrate in this video. And Bjorn, I don't know yet how to explain it, but I think this idea of compound rotation used by Milkovic and Lathwaite could lead to very useful things if explored and implemented properly. I agree, and maybe some of our viewers would be interested in exploring this technology further on their own. David, thank you for introducing us to this technology. My pleasure. So, what can you say about what's coming up in our next video? The next video is fundamental. Forty years ago, I had a front row view of over unity technology that permanently placed me on this trail exploring infinite energy. This will be the story both of what happened and of the attempted cover-up. All right, looking forward to it. We will make sure that we catch that story and thank you all for watching and until then See, See you, you next, next video. video.